we talk about line five. There's also line five, which feeds into line nine. So line five comes through uh, the upper, like I said, the upper United States and comes through Michigan and then it then lands in Sarnia, if you will, where there's a lot of refinery. But then that continues to feed into another pipeline, line nine. Am I correct? That's correct. And now line nine is a uh, product or resource. Uh, petroleum companies uh, process the oil and turn it into gasoline, and they have their own matrix of pipelines. One, of course, from Sarnia going all the way to the Toronto International Airport, Pearson Airport, which is 100% of all the fuel there. But line nine also supplies Quebec's second largest refinery in Montreal, the uh, Suncor, old formerly known as Petro Canada uh, um, refinery. And there, of course, about 30% of that uh, vital. Uh, refineries uh, product comes directly from again line five so all these pipelines are connected and when you dismantle one or you block one you necessarily create a sort of a cascading effect a knock-on effect as uh, the trendies like to use in terms of other uh, pipelines and other refineries fully in Canada uh, except for the Irving and Jean Gaulin refineries there are uh, at least five refineries, the one in Montreal and the four in Ontario, which would be adversely affected. They wouldn't be able to produce much in the way of diesel or gasoline, right. and that would bring your economy to a standstill. Well, and you mentioned that 100% of, of, I guess, jet fuel comes through this Line 9, which feeds off Line 5 to the Toronto International Airport, which is the largest airport in the country. There's a separate line that uh, feeds from Sarnia directly to Pearson Airport. Okay. Uh, that's not necessarily connected to line nine, uh, but line nine and line nine B are extremely important for all of the vitality of the economic engine of Ontario and Quebec. And not just that, of course, uh, the propane that uh, goes as far as not just Ontario and Quebec, but indeed the Maritimes. Right. So messing around with this pipeline uh, and it's, uh, it's indispensable uh, position at the core of our economy uh, is not something you want to fool around with. I could see a scenario very easily. The first victim, you would not be able to get a flight in or out of Pearson Airport, the third largest hub in North America, and of course Canada's biggest airport would literally be brought to its knees. Okay, and just to, again, make this very clear to our viewers, and, and for myself as well, so how many businesses, do you have an estimation as to how many businesses or how many families would be impacted if this governor in Michigan gets her way and shuts down Line 5? Well, short term, would you probably be looking at least ten to 20,000 families be directly affected? Uh, that's not to say uh, that those who of us who have a business, uh, re rely on transportation, wouldn't be able to get around the yellow tape that's around most gas stations. And while companies can, you know, work around and get things delivered by rail or by truck or by ship, it's not as efficient as the pipeline. And it would mean that, uh, you know, you wouldn't just see a disruption in terms of not being able to get from point A to point B. You'd also likely see a massive spike in the price because we're not just talking about the Ontario, Quebec maritime market for fuel. We're also talking about critically the Michigan and uh, Ohio markets, which would compete with us right. to get whatever sap up, whatever residual supply is out there. Mind you, the Americans have been very successful in building out their pipelines, while Canada has deliberately tolerated the kind of negative uh, anti-pipeline, which means that pipelines like uh, Energy East, which is already supplying natural gas to Ontario, which could be converted had we not taken the time to uh, second guess, could already be an alternative. But that's two or three years away. We're in a bit of a crisis, and we better hope. Uh, it's quite, uh, if you will call it, a crapshoot. And I think, unfortunately, those who banked on ignorance for quite some time, they'd be very much in in in, in mood uh, and in mode for a very serious rude awakening. So, why is Michigan doing this? Why now? It's a constituency within the United States, a very strong constituency. The same folks that uh, are opposing the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, more of a United States thing. The same ones that are opposing and already approved and being built uh, uh, Line Three and Bridge, which runs from Alberta to Manitoba, dips down and supplies almost all of the U.S. refineries. Mm. The same ones that we saw were behind Biden killing Keystone XL. The same ones that are against the Trans Mountain Pipeline, the coastal gas link. Take your pick. Canada has been really a petri dish for these green radicals to shut down uh, pipelines. And if the Canadians uh, accept that they, it's okay to be victims under some kind of woke idea that you can shut down your fossil fuel industry and harbor hydrocarbons industry, the Americans aren't going to stop us uh, or get in our way. The reality here is that uh, American, this particular governor, Gretchen Whitmer, uh, is uh, very much in that sphere of people who want pipelines shut down without taking into consideration the totality of the importance of this pipeline in terms of her own constituents, not just with propane, 
but with their one big refinery in Marathon in Detroit.